The new homeowner always wanted a pool in his backyard. After two years of procrastination, he finally mustered the courage and energy to start the project. One bright Saturday morning, he rented a mini excavator and began the arduous task of digging out the ground. As he maneuvered the machine, he noticed that the soil seemed to have been previously disturbed, almost as if someone had landscaped the yard long ago. 50-year-old Jack Limpsey had always dreamed of having a pool in his backyard in his new home in Sunny Spring, California. This summer, he finally decided to start the project. After months of saving and planning, Jack rented an excavator and began the daunting task of transforming his ordinary backyard into a personal oasis. The sun was blazing as he worked. The rhythmic hum of the machine echoing through the quiet neighborhood. Jack's wife, 47-year-old Emily, and their two kids, Tommy, 10, and Sarah, 8, watched with excitement from the porch. As the excavator's arm plunged into the earth, Jack noticed something odd about the soil. It seemed too well packed, too meticulously arranged. The more he dug, the more he felt like he was unearthing someone else's work. He had only bought the property two years ago and he only noticed it now. Someone had clearly landscaped this yard before him, but why? And who? Jack pushed these thoughts aside, focusing on the task at hand. He envisioned the crystal clear water, the laughter of his children, and the joy of summer barbecues by the pool. But as he dug deeper, his shovel struck something hard. He was alarmed and didn't want to damage the rented power machinery. The sound of metal against metal rang out, startling him. Jack turned off the excavator and jumped down into the hole to investigate. Jack continued to dig until he heard a distinct clink against the metal bucket of the excavator. He halted the machine and jumped down, bending to inspect the source of the noise. Brushing away the loose dirt, he uncovered a rusty chain. It didn't look ancient, but it was clear it had been buried for some time. Puzzled, he tugged at the chain, revealing more and more of its length until he realized it was attached to something deeper in the ground. Kneeling in the dirt, Jack began to clear away the soil with his hands. Slowly, the outline of a chain emerged. It was thick and rusted, yet it seemed as though it was recently put there. It was as if it had been buried deliberately, but not too long ago. He tugged at it, feeling the weight and the resistance of whatever was on the other end. The worried father thought to tell his family to go back inside the house. He wasn't sure what was buried in his backyard. A sense of unease crept over Jack. He glanced back at Emily and the kids, who were now engaged in their activities. He signaled to his wife that he was still busy, and motioned that they go back inside the house. She didn't notice that. Her husband had found something. He didn't want to alarm them, but his curiosity got the better of him. What could this chain be attached to? Jack dug further, revealing more of the chain. It snaked deeper into the earth, leading him to wonder if it was part of something larger, something hidden. He was torn between the excitement of discovery and a growing sense of dread. He decided to follow the chain. With each foot of dirt he removed, the chain extended as if leading him to a buried secret. His mind raced with possibilities, a buried treasure, an old well, or something more sinister. The afternoon sun dipped lower, casting an eerie shadow across the yard. Jack's hands were dirty and blistered, but he couldn't stop. The chain seemed to go on forever. He considered calling someone for help but dismissed the idea. It looked like it was leading to his neighbor's property. Did his neighbor know about it? He needed answers. This was his project, his backyard. He had to see it through. As twilight descended, Jack's determination wavered. He was tired and the chain showed no sign of ending. He had been pulling for an hour, the chain was incredibly long. Just as he was about to give up for the day, he uncovered a large, rusty padlock. It was old and covered in mud, but still intact. 
The sight of it sent a shiver down his spine. It meant that somebody else must have buried it there fairly recently. Why would someone bury a padlocked chain in his backyard? Jack's heart pounded as he examined it. He pulled at the chain again, but the padlock held firm. There was something significant down there, something someone wanted to keep hidden. Jack stood up, wiping the sweat from his brow. He looked around his yard, now a chaotic mess of dirt and debris. He had a decision to make. Stop and cover everything back up, or continue digging to uncover the truth. He left his spade down. He decided to go inside and sleep on it. That night, Jack tossed in. Turned, his dreams filled with images of chains, low. CKS, and dark secrets buried deep underground. He awoke in the early hours, determined to finish what he started. At dawn, Jack was back in the hole, shovel in hand. The padlock stared up at him like a challenge. He resolved to break it open. With a few hard swings of a sledgehammer, the lock shattered. Jack's breath quickened as he pulled the chain free. As Jack worked, his neighbor, Alice May, strolled out into her yard and saw what he was doing. She rarely came out of her house. Alice had always been a kind neighbor, often bringing over cookies or lending a hand when needed. She lived alone in her house and Jack didn't know much about her personal life. She started walking over to the boundary fence. She called out to him, Jack, what on earth are you digging up over there? Jack waved her over, excitement and a hint of concern in his voice. Alice, you've got to see this. I found something strange. He pointed to the freshly dug mound. It looks like a chain, Jack replied, showing her the metal links. I wonder what it's attached to. Alice's face paled as she saw the chain. Let me help you, she said, her voice trembling slightly. The quiet neighbor had no idea what she got herself into. Alice's curiosity was instantly heightened. She hurried over, her nosiness growing with each step. The air was thick with the scent of decay and damp earth. Jack showed Alice that the chain was under her property too. She wanted to see where it led to. As they dug, the outline of a trapdoor began to emerge. It was old and wooden, reinforced with metal. Brackets. Was it always under their houses? Together, they continued to excavate around the chain, carefully uncovering more dirt. When she saw the chain, her face paled. Jack, that doesn't look like a normal find. Have you called anyone about it? I just found it now, Jack replied. I was going to keep digging to see what it's attached to. He tried to clear the entranceway. Together, they dug around the chain, unearthing a small, rusty door embedded in the ground. It was definitely covered up for a reason. Jack's heart raced with a mixture of excitement and dread. He looked at Alice, whose face mirrored his own apprehension. Should we open it? Jack asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Alice nodded, her hands trembling. Let's see what's inside. It looked like the entrance to an old bunker. With a bit of effort, they managed to pry it open, revealing a dark, musty space below. They didn't realize what was waiting inside for them. Jack pried the door open, revealing a dark staircase leading down into the earth. The place smelled foul and he had to block his nose. Alice covered her face with her scarf. The air that wafted up was cool and musty, tinged with an unsettling scent of decay. Taking a deep breath, Jack grabbed a flashlight and began to descend the stairs, Alice following close behind. The brave neighbors didn't realize what they had unearthed. At the bottom of the stairs, they found themselves in a small bunker. There was a makeshift bed in the corner. The walls were lined with shelves filled with canned food, and the floor was littered with discarded clothes. Alice hesitated at the edge of the bunker, but Jack, his curiosity overriding his caution, climbed down into the darkness. He fumbled for his flashlight, the beam. Cutting through the gloom, the sight was both eerie and bewildering. 
Jack's flashlight beam swept across the room, landing on a pile of clothing in the corner. Among the garments were several dresses and shoes that looked distinctly feminine. Was somebody living there? Inside was a dark, narrow staircase descending deeper into the bunker. Jack and Alice exchanged uneasy looks, but curiosity got the better of them. Using a flashlight, they cautiously made their way inside. The air was musty, and it was clear that no one had been there in a long time. As the light flickered over the walls, they saw signs of habitation, girls' clothes, toys, and old, half-eaten cans of food. Jack realized that they had discovered something suspicious. It looked like someone had been living there, hiding away from the world. What he saw made his blood run cold. Girls' clothes, scattered and dusty, along with cans of food that had long since expired. Whoever it was, didn't come back. Alice gasped, covering her mouth with her hand. Oh my god, Jack. These are girls' clothes. Who could have been here? Jack shook his head, his mind racing. I don't know, but someone must have used this place recently enough to leave food and clothes. The timid Alice looked like she had seen a ghost, she picked up a knitted sweater and put it on the table. Her behavior was strange, and Jack was starting to get worried. As they explored further, Alice's eyes fell on a small, tattered notebook lying on a makeshift table. She picked it up, her hands shaking even more now. Flipping through the pages, her eyes widened in horror. The entry, S were written in a hurried, desperate hand, detailing the life of someone hiding here. Jack leaned over her shoulder, reading the words with growing unease. Alice, this, this doesn't make sense. Who could have written this? Suddenly, Alice's breath caught in her throat. There's something I have to tell you Jack, I wanted to tell you when you first moved in. Something happened here a few years ago, she sobbed. She recognized the handwriting. It was unmistakably her daughter Claire's. Claire had gone missing five years ago without a trace, and despite extensive searches, there had been no leads. Tears welled up in Alice's eyes as she clutched the notebook to her chest. Alice's scream echoed through the bunker. Jack spun around to see her staring at a small pink dress, her hands covering her mouth in horror. That's, that's Claire's, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. The emotional mother had been dragged back to a bad memory. She had tried her best to move on with her life, but it came back to haunt her. Jack, this is Claire's. My daughter wrote this, she said, her voice breaking. She was here. She must have been hiding here. Jack recalled hearing about Claire's disappearance five years ago. Alice's daughter had vanished without a trace, and despite a thorough investigation, no leads had ever been found. Alice's husband, Claire's stepfather, had been suspected but never charged, and shortly after, he too had disappeared. I, I think we need to call the police, Jack said, feeling a sinking dread. He realized he was now entangled in a mystery far deeper and darker than he had anticipated. Alice let out a strangled cry, her hand flying to her mouth. She recognized some of the clothes. They belonged to her daughter, Claire, who had gone missing five years ago. The disappearance had devastated Alice and her husband, Claire's stepfather, who had been the prime suspect in the case but vanished soon after Claire did. Jack's heart pounded as he saw the pain in Alice's eyes. We need to call the police, he said firmly, placing a reassuring hand on her shoulder. They quickly exited the bunker, and Jack made the call. Jack's mind raced. Alice, we need to call the police. This could be the break they've been looking for in her case. Alice nodded, but her legs gave out from under her, and she sank to the floor, sobbing uncontrollably. Jack knelt beside her, trying to offer comfort even as his own thoughts swirled with confusion and fear. He pulled out his phone and dialed 911, explaining the situation to the dispatcher as best he could. 
Alice tried to explain the kidnapping to Jack who listened intently. The police arrived quickly, the quiet street now buzzing with activity. As they investigated the bunker, Alice recounted the painful story of Claire's disappearance, her voice breaking as she described the night her daughter went missing. Jack stood by her side, feeling a mix of guilt and sorrow for having unwittingly reopened such a painful chapter in Alice's life. He was now fully invested. When the police arrived, they cordoned off the area and began a thorough examination of the bunker. Alice watched anxiously as officers catalogued the contents and took photographs. One officer approached Alice gently. Ma'am, we'll need to take you to the station for some questions. Alice nodded, numb with shock. As she turned to Jack, she managed a small, grateful smile. Thank you, Jack. I can't believe you found this. Jack nodded solemnly. I'm just glad it might help find out what happened. The news of the discovery spread quickly through the neighborhood. Jack asks his other neighbors to please respect their privacy. People watched from their windows and whispered among themselves. Emily, Jack's wife, had to keep asking reporters to get off their property. The police worked late into the night, gathering evidence and piecing together the clues left behind, but they had no idea that things were just going to get worse. Jack accompanied Alice to the local police station to sign a report. They had to reopen the old case. Alice sat in the police station, clutching a photograph of Claire. Memories flooded her mind, Claire's laughter, her bright eyes, and the day she vanished. The investigation had hit a dead end, and with her husband missing, Alice had felt utterly alone. Now, there was a glimmer of hope, but also a resurgence of fear and uncertainty. The following days were a whirlwind of activity. The police reopened. Claire's case and media interest was reignited. Jack found himself at the center of attention, but he remained focused on supporting Alice. Luckily his wife was on his side and helped to keep things under control at their home. A worried Jack had taken a liking to Alice, and the thought of something sinister happening so close to home unsettled him deeply. But would he be able to help her? Question mark. Over the next few days, the police unearthed more evidence. E from the bunker. Old photographs, notes, and various personal items that seemed to belong to Claire. Each discovery brought a fresh wave of pain for Alice, but also a glimmer of hope that perhaps they were finally closer to finding the truth. As the investigation progressed, more details emerged. Forensic experts determined that the bunker had been used sporadically over the years, and there were signs that someone had lived there relatively recently. Alice's hope grew that Claire might still be alive. A week later, the police held a press conference. They had found new leads linking the bunker to several unsolved cases in the region. Alice watched anxiously, her heart pounding. The past few weeks were grueling going in and out of the detective's offices. The chief investigator confirmed that they were now treating the case as a potential serial kidnapping and that Claire's stepfather was a person of interest in multiple disappearances. Days turned into weeks and the investigation continued. Alice's ex-husband, Robert, was now a lead suspect in the case. The police discovered that the bunker had been built decades ago, likely as a fallout shelter during the Cold War. Its existence was a secret, known only to a few. The chain they had found seemed to have been a makeshift way to lock it from the inside, hinting that someone had been trapped down there. Alice's emotions were a tumultuous mix of hope and dread. She wondered how long her evil ex-husband had kept her sweet child down here. If she were still alive, she would be 12 years old this year. She clung to the possibility that Claire could still be out there, but the uncertainty was agonizing. Jack visited her often, bringing meals and offering a shoulder to lean on. They spent hours talking about Claire, reminiscing about happier times. One evening, as they sat on Alice's porch, she turned to Jack with tears in her eyes. 
What if we never find her? What if she's gone? Forever? Jack squeezed her hand. We can't think like that, Alice. We have to believe that she's out there, waiting to be found. The police have more evidence now. They'll keep looking. Emily stepped outside to offer her husband and neighbor some hot cocoa, for the nerves, she said with a smile. But she knew that she was interrupting something between them. Days turned into weeks, and the investigation continued. The bunker yielded more clues, including a journal that appeared to belong to Claire. It contained heart-wrenching entries about her fear and longing to be found. The evil Robert had kept her locked inside for three months, and nobody knew. Alice wept as she read the journal, feeling closer to her daughter than she had in years. The diary entries ended abruptly. Five years ago when he had taken her away for good, the police also discovered fingerprints in the bunker matching Claire's stepfather. This breakthrough led to a renewed search for him. Posters went up, and the media broadcasted his image nationwide. Alice was overwhelmed by the media, but she appreciated any support. It seemed like every resource was being used to find Claire and bring her captor to justice. But were they too late? Robert and Claire could be anywhere by now. Jack found himself constantly thinking about the case. His children were annoyed that their home was turned into a crime scene. His pool project was forgotten, the hole in his yard now a stark reminder of the secrets that lay buried in the seemingly peaceful neighborhood. He spent hours talking with Alice, learning about Claire and the events leading up to her disappearance. He believed that there was a reason he was the one that uncovered the old bunker. One evening, as they sat on Alice's porch, she shared a memory of Claire that brought tears to her eyes. She was such a bright, happy child. Always full of life, Alice said, her voice quivering. I never believed that she just ran away. Something happened, something terrible. Jack felt a deep sense of empathy for Alice. He wished there was more he could do to help, but he knew that the best thing he could offer was his support and a listening ear. That same night, Jack was awakened by a loud knocking on his door. It was Alice, her face pale and eyes wide with fear. They found something else, she said, her voice shaking. You need to come with me. Jack followed her to the bunker, where the police were carefully excavating a section of the wall. Behind it, they discovered a hidden compartment containing old diaries and letters. They belonged to Claire's stepfather, detailing his obsession and eventual abduction of Claire. This was the hard evidence they needed against him. The entries revealed a twisted mind, one that had meticulously planned and executed the kidnapping. Robert was a guilty criminal. Alice's hands shook as she read the words, tears streaming down her face. I knew he had something to do with it, she sobbed but I never imagined. Quote, Jack put a comforting arm around her, feeling the weight of the revelation. She sobbed in his arms. The police assured Alice that this new evidence would be crucial in finding Claire, and possibly bringing her home. But they had no idea that they were sent on a wild goose chase. The discovery of the bunker and the stepfather's diaries made headlines. The quiet neighborhood was now under the Scrutiny of the media, reporters eager to uncover every detail. Jack found himself thrust into the spotlight, his role in the discovery making him an unwitting hero in the unfolding drama. Despite the chaos, Jack remained focused on supporting Alice. He spent hours at the police station, helping with the investigation and piecing together the clues. His life had taken an unexpected turn, but he was determined to see it through. Would they ever find Claire?